Hey, what's going on, people? I am back with a new video, a quick video, a quick video, because I was inspired yesterday by by this era. I was inspired by this era, and it just I just had to do a video. I just had to do a quick video. I I couldn't let it be. I had to do this video. Um. You know, I'm going to talk about the New Jack Swing era. You see, I came in getting my groove on. I had to rock off a minute. I had to represent the team, you know. True E, A. I'm going to put the shirt so y'all can get one. Because y'all, as y'all can see, I rock, to, I rock this shirt and I rock this base hat every video. So I'm going to put it in the more info box so y'all can go check it out. Go get y'all some shirts. Go get y'all some shirts if you want to. You know what I mean? But, uh... And be down with the team, because like I said, if you ain't down with the team, you ain't down with nothing. But, um, yeah. So, um, I came in with Groove Me. Groove Me. Once that's played at, like, a party, I still go off to it. Because I'm going to go off to it tomorrow, because Biz Marquis is doing an 80s, 90 party at Soundstage in Baltimore tomorrow. And I'm going to go off after this hard day, after this hard week at work, man. I'm going to get my groove on. I'm going to be all over the floor, man. I'm going to go off, 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 off. But, um, yeah, it's just, this era is so dope. Every time I talk about this era, it, it just makes me smile because this is the era that, like, I like how one of my homeboys from uh, Twitter, if I can name his name, uh, is it Elgin? I think it's Elgin. Like he said, the 80s made me, but the 90s raised me. I love that line. I love that line because it's the truth. I was born in the 80s, and then the 90s kind of raised me on who I am, especially when it comes to music. And New Jack Swing was a big, big part of my life because there was four albums that my mom and dad played all the time, and that was Guys, Guy, um... Bobby Brown's, uh, Don't Be Cruel, and, um, Keith Sweat, Make It Last Forever. Those three, and Janet Jackson's Rhythm Nation. Now, you know, I, do I put that in the New Jack Swing? It still had that vibe, don't get me wrong. So some people do kind of throw that into the New Jack Swing, but if we want to talk about pure New Jack Swing albums, it would be Groove Me. It wouldn't Groove Me. God, the song is on and I'm rocking to it. But Guy's Guy, Bobby Brown's uh, Don't Be Cruel, and um, Keith Sweat's Make It Last Forever. Um, and they played that album, so, those three albums, so much that I know it from top to bottom. Like, those albums is so dope. It's a big part of my life. You know, my mom and dad, I remember, you know, um, when, as a kid, when he used to play it in the car, I used to be in my car seat just, I used to just be rocking off in the car seat, and my mom and dad used to be going off, especially my mom, you know, when my mom with a bed in her hand, and my dad riding, and he just, and we be in the car as a family just rocking off to this music that Teddy Riley kind of created, man, um, you know, he was just a pivotal, a pivotal moment. Uh, he, I ain't even getting it out right. Hold on, let me get a drink. Maybe I can get it right after. He was a big reason for this era. He was a huge reason for this era. And um, he, as you see, he did God Groove Me. Like, he did that. And it was just dope. And, um, you know, and then I remember when... You know, me and my family moved up back up to Jersey, and um, when we moved to Jersey, back up to Jersey, whatever, whatever. Look, y'all, I'm drinking, but it's cool. <laughs> so uh, we moved back up to uh, New Jersey, and um, we would go, and you know, we done brought this, these three albums so many times, but any time we was ready to go on a trip, my mom and dad, or we were going back to South Carolina to visit family or something like that, they would go and buy a guy, Bobby Brown, Keith Sweat, and, um, and Janet Jackson's Rhythm Nation. Now, Keith Sweat is actually kind of hard for us to play now because, um, 
my father passing, you know, God bless his soul, he used to love to make it last forever album, and it took a while for me and my mom to actually start listening to that album again, because it was kind of tough, because those were one of the albums that my dad loved, and then another person in my life, um, was my cousin Andre, God bless his soul, he died as well, he used to love Keith Sweat as well, and he used to love the Keep It Coming album. And when um, and, uh, when we would live in South Carolina, that was one thing that I would always remember about him playing with Keith Sweat. He would play the Keep It Coming album, and he would talk, teach me how to make hamburgers. So I will always have that memory with, you know, Keith Sweat and the New Jack Swing era is those memories right there. And um, it's just so dope that... We had an era like this. That's why I, I, I like talking about this era because it seems like, you know, when you go back and start talking about this era, people say, oh, you're not ready to, to um, embrace the new generation. Yes, I am. But this music, these people made it from their soul. You know, they wanted to make money from it, but they made it from their hearts and their soul, and they wanted it to last. You know, music now just don't seem to last, especially when it comes to R&B music, because people are not making trends anymore. Everybody wants to stay within this box. New Jack Swing, nobody was doing that. Teddy Riley started something so monumental that it can't be duplicated. And, you know, Teddy Riley does not get the respect that he was. You know what bothers me? Everybody seems to know about Teddy Riley when it comes to Michael Jackson. That's the only time when they seem to talk about him when it comes to, you know, Michael Jackson, he did the Dangerous album. Don't get me wrong, that is basically maybe the last album that was really kind of New Jack Swing-ish. Um, that, like, 91 is kind of when New Jack Swing was going to take a turn, and it took... It didn't go. It didn't go out. It just a, something was birthed. A new, new, a new era was birthed, and I just think that Teddy Riley is so not respected. Because if it wasn't because of Teddy Riley, we wouldn't have the Neptunes. We wouldn't have Missy and Timberland. Like he knew these. You know, he he saw something in these guys. Like if it wasn't because of um him, we wouldn't have Pharrell on the SWV. S double D U D V V. That's Pharrell on the Human Nature um, right here remix with S W V. We wouldn't have Pharrell. You know what I'm saying? And and it just to me they kind of pushed Teddy Riley in the background. And from one from 1986 to maybe 1991, Teddy Riley had it on lock. He it was his. It was his game to be had. He was in. You know, he took the New Jack Swing and made it pop. Like, it was amazing what he did. And he just don't get his respect. And for me, he's in my top ten. Like, he's in my top ten. And um, I think that it kind of, you know, he started it with kind of like the key sweat. Because I also found out that Teddy Riley was a major reason for the show with um, um, uh, Dougie Fresh and, and Slick Rick. He produced that song. So it's a lot of things that people don't know about Teddy that he really had a big part in this game in R&B music and hip-hop. And people don't give him that. Everybody just know him from Remember the Time and Jam from Michael because Michael was so huge. But he created so many groups. He created Guy and it's because of him because of Keith Sweat and he also did stuff on Bobby Brown's Don't Be Cruel and he did um, the Jane Child uh, remix, If uh, I Want to Love You, uh, uh, If I Don't Want to Love, If I'm Not Saying the Words Right, but yes, he's the reason for many, many careers from 1986 to 1991, a lot of careers, a lot of careers, if, you know, um, he did a lot for Heavy D, he did a lot for Heavy D, you know what I'm saying, he did a lot for him, and then, um, you know, I was watching Unsung yesterday, and I was watching it with, um, uh, with I'll Be Sure. And I'm not the biggest I'll Be Sure fan. I'm not the biggest I'll Be Sure fan. It's just, his voice just didn't do anything for me. Don't get me wrong, I'm not a hater. He got bangers. You know what I'm saying? He got bangers. Night and Day is basically his classic. You know what I mean? And in effect mode, um... I'm like, I'll be sure he's in effect mode. I used to have a crush on Dawn from In Vogue. Hey, I had to throw my homeboy Fife in there from Tropical Quest. That's one of my favorite groups. I had to throw them in there. But, um, yeah, he, he, um, 
he, dang, I forgot where the hell I was, y'all. I'm so sorry. Where the hell was I at? Oh, I was talking, yes, I'm sorry. I was talking about I'll Be Sure's um, Unsung. And, um, you know, they were talking about, you know, how that era was just so, oh, my God, it was so epic. Like, it was just it just made you want to dance, and it wasn't, and you weren't afraid as a dude. Dudes was killing it on the dance floor, and you know, um, Bobby Brown's "Don't Be Cruel" is actually one up. It's the biggest, you know, New Jack Swing album of all time. Now, a lot of people say it's Michael, but the reason why I think Michael had a bigger fan base than Bobby. So, anything Michael would have done, it would have probably been big, because Don't Be Cruel was, it was out of here. It was, it, like, after he left New Edition, and he made his first album, and then he finally got with um, Babyface, and, 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 um, and L.A. Reid, and Daryl Simmons, and they got all together, and they created that. Bobby was out of here. Like, he was moving and dancing with every little step. I think, how would I sing? And that song is on Don't Be Cruel. Like, I'm tripping. But, hey. But, um, uh, Don't Be Cruel is, is, I feel like, I feel like that album represents kind of the height of New Jack Swing for me. Because when Bobby brought out that album, nobody wasn't fooling with him. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, I like, I go back to Q-Tip saying again. He said that, what did he say in the excursions? He said, um, Bobby Brown is like the new Michael or something like that. If I knew the rhyme, I could say it. But Bobby couldn't be touched. But one thing about the New Jack Swing era, New Edition was killing it, man. They were killing it. Like, they were killing it. They were, like, you had, you know, Bobby with Don't Be Cruel, you know what I'm saying? And then you had, when you hear that. Ha! Poison, when that beat drops to this day. Like, I'll be killing it on dance floor. But um, you had New Edition that they had, the to me as a group, the New Jack Swing was the best for them. Because you had Bobby that was, he was like the king of the New Jack Swing. Like, he really was. Because I guess, you know, even though Keith Sweat's album, um, Make It Last Forever, was kind of the start of you know, the New Jack Swing, and kind of bringing it to the forefront, but after Bobby brought out Don't Be Cruel, it was over, after, you know, with that, then when New Edition, even with their Heartbreak album, you know, that album even had some bangers on it, like, If It Isn't Love, it's kind of, you know, a New Jack Swing kind of vibe, any Heartbreak remix is clearly is, that's clearly, like, you know what I mean, that just is, and then, um, Another one, um, Johnny Gill and Rub You the Right Way. He he did it. And then, of course, with BBD with Poison. You know, they, them three was the underdogs. They were the underdogs. Nobody really, like, be, you got to be real. In New Edition, nobody really paid those three any attention. You paid attention to Ralph because Ralph was the, the leader. You paid attention to Bobby, of course. And then, you know, they were kind of like the talkers, the brothers, the three that were kind of outsiders. So when they came with Poison, they opened, people was opening their eyes like, what? They, they came with it. Like, and then I love, like, the part when they just used Poison, Poison, Poison. That's Cool G Rap. And Cool G Rap was like, whoa, I'm, he, he made himself in the video. Like, you know, he... I think he knew this song was going to be big. Like, I feel like that's why he was like, yo, I got to get in this video. Because Poison, his, you know, Poison, Poison, Poison was hot then. So that kind of gave, you know, this a little bit of that edge, that hip-hop edge that BBD needed. And BBD, man, when they came out with Poison, it was over, man. They, they, they were killing it. They were killing it. And it's just, 
that era just so hype. That's why I'm so excited for myself tomorrow when I go to that Biz Marquee um, uh, 80s, 90s party. Like, I'm be so hyped because when this joint drop, I'm going to lose my mind, man. Because, yo, it's just... It brings so many memories. Me as a kid dancing to this, like watching the video and just wanting to do the steps like them. Like it was just so dope, and it was just like, ah, uh, like I'm just so excited. That's why today, like I had to listen to um, my favorite hip hop, uh, my hip hop, um, New Jack Swing album, which consists of um, Keith Sweat, Make It Last Forever, Bobby Brown, Don't Be Cruel. Uh, BBD's Poison, um, uh, Ralph, Ralph, uh, Ralph Transvance's first album, Sensitivity is one of my top favorite five songs of all time, um, you got, uh, of course, you got, um, you know, um, Dangerous and all that good stuff, and you got that, but, you know, though, and then I also would throw Boys the Men's, um, Cooley high, high Harmony in there because Motown Philly definitely gives you that new jack swing. But you know what really, really bothered me about the Unsung video was the fact that, you know, they tried to say that gangster rap kind of killed new jack swing. No, it didn't. Just a new, a new, you know, thing was, you know, a new era was birthed. And my favorite artist was the one that started that. And it was just like, as soon as you heard this, it was over. Ah, I wish I was ah, ah, come on, hey, 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 hey. See, she created a new genre. It just didn't die because of gangster rap. Gangster rap did not kill. New Jack Swing. New Jack Swing is kind of, they actually still consider Mary J. Blige kind of the New Jack Swing era. But she created a hip-hop soul because she got on a hip-hop loop and they kept looping it. And Mary is singing on it like she an MC. And then... to do a quick video. It's not, I didn't want it to be too long. I just wanted to vibe with y'all a little bit, talk about the New Jack Swing era. Wanted to kind of let Unsung know that Gangsta Rap didn't kill New Jack Swing. It's just a new era was birthed from that. And it was Hip Hop Soul. And my favorite artist, Mary J. Blige, became the queen of Hip Hop Soul. And that's just what it is. And like I said, I wanted to do a quick video for y'all. It wasn't going to be too long. I only kept y'all for like 18 minutes because normally I can talk, 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 talk and go all day and put my life into this music. But I just wanted to do this quick video. Um, I hope y'all was rocking with me. The music was rocking. Y'all can't tell me this music wasn't rocking. If it ain't rocking, you bugging. But on that note, I'm out, y'all. Brooklyn! Hey, hey!